today's class uh, we will discuss about uh, one more type of signal generator which we uh, call it as triangular or rectangular wave generator triangular or rectangular wave generator now uh, by the very title you can understand that this circuit is capable of generating either a triangular waveform or a rectangular waveform so probably there somewhere you will have to recall the operation of uh, you know a circuit where a triangular waveform okay could be converted into say a kind of rectangular waveform or a rectangular input which is going to get converted into a triangular waveform right so this we will have to recall and accordingly based on that we will try to uh, see how exactly this circuit works uh, first let me give you the circuit diagram for a triangular or rectangular waveform basically the circuit generates either the triangular or the rectangular waveform on its own without needing for any external input this sometimes falls under the category of the oscillator also right so that's the reason why you can see this uh, in the oscillator topic in your uh, syllabus anyway we will discuss about this uh, uh, signal generator with the help of a circuit diagram now let me give you the circuit diagram again i need two operational amplifiers here so one something like this okay wherein i use one resistance here and then i use a feedback capacitor so now you should be able to tell me what kind of circuit this represents with your knowledge so far minus VEE whenever your capacitor is connected in the feedback so you should be able to understand what kind of uh, circuit it is then I use one more op amp here okay and this one I am giving to the output of this as you can see and of course this one I am connecting to ground just for my convenience I am drawing it in the other direction so this is plus VCC minus VEE then this will be my another output and please see here I am having a feedback something like this this I am joining and this will be one output this will be another output and again this is plus and this is minus as long as the second op amp is concerned now let me call this as c1 this as r1 this as r2 this as r3 and i don't have any resistances here right and now you can see what kind of circuit i have drawn so let me put it in the box because i represent 
two different circuitries here which both of both the circuits you are very much familiar with this is one and your second circuitry is this one this one so this one the one which is with red block is definitely an integrator circuit may not be with all the components in the integrator circuit with uh, which we have discussed earlier had a resistance in parallel that is for a different reason right so when you have a one resistance here and a feedback capacitance inherently it is a integrator circuit and this is your integrator output then the other one right so this is non inverting schmidt trigger you can see here it is the non inverting schmidt trigger right r2 and r3 right so they are going to give you the feedback in fact r2 and r3 they are going to give you the feedback right and this is schmidt trigger output this is how your circuit looks like please note that the circuit does not take any external input because the output of the integrator here it happens to be the input to your non inverting schmidt trigger and the output of the schmidt trigger happens to be the input to your integrator that is the reason why i as i have already told you sometimes it is referred to as an oscillator circuit also we have already seen so a oscillator circuit which starts giving the different kinds of output without receiving any external input right so on the same principle we can analyze the working of this also so now let me draw the input and output waveforms here so here which one is input which one is output that is uh, immaterial for the time being so let me take it something like this and this one i will have it like this here i have one more so now i draw the triangular waveform something like this so let me take it as t this is uh, i cannot take it as v in or v out now this i can write something like this this will be the output in fact as long as you are triangular wave is symmetric right you should get equal you know the on time and off time here so this is minus v not set this is plus v not sat so this is integrator output and this is schmidt trigger
I call this as uh, t1 this instant this as t2 this as t3 and this as t4 this is for our understanding and this will be UTP this will be LTP for my Schmidt trigger circuit so for as an integrator you cannot take it as UTP or LTP right you can have it as the upper peak and lower peak of the output waveform this is how you draw this circuit so here basically your uh, integrator produces triangular wave output integrator produces the triangular wave output and your Schmidt trigger produces square wave output it is as per our title right triangular bar rectangular waveform generator and the whole circuit doesn't require any external input this is a very important point to be noted here the whole circuit doesn't require any external input so now how can we analyze this circuit I will make it little small so that everything is available in a single frame for us okay so now how do you analyze the working of this now we will take it from the point of view of your uh, timings right at t1 here right so at t1 you are assuming that right we start from a particular point so let us say that at t1 right so your integrator output integrator output is at UTP I hope all of you can agree with me the integrator output is at UTP and your Schmidt trigger output is at so this is plus V naught set because it is a non-inverting Schmidt trigger circuit right so at T1 your integrator output is at UTP and your Schmidt trigger output is at uh, plus V naught set so now uh, how exactly you can have the working of this the analysis right so let me take this as uh, current I1 here this current as I1 okay so now the current I1 flows through R1 and it will charge the capacitor with this polarity this as plus and this as minus so now this will be my VC correct or not right current I1 let me write like this flows through R1 C is charged with polarity as shown C is charged with the polarity as shown right so now once the capacitor is being charged with the polarity like this so definitely when you have the working of your integrator at the back of your mind so you are going to get a negative going ramp you are going to get a negative going ramp like this right so that means 
so you have the output of integrator is a negative going ramp the output of the integrator is a negative going ramp so now uh, it goes in the negative direction and at one point of time it will reach t2 that is ltp and when exactly it reaches t2 that is all decided by the charging time constant r1 and c1 that we have already discussed earlier right so now at t2 at t2 the output of integrator reaches ltp so at t2 the output of the integrator reaches ltp so obviously this will make output of schmidt trigger to switch to minus v not set from plus v not set i hope all of you are taking down these things these are very important explanations right it will reach a uh, minus v not set and once it reaches minus v not set so definitely now the direction of i1 changes its direction and vc is now reversed so this is the simple thing because the vc is reversed now you are going to have this ramp so this will go here and again it will reach uh, you know uh, utp so once it reaches utp again your output will switch from you know minus v not set to plus v not set so when vc is equals to utp so schmidt trigger output switches back to plus v not set and it repeats the entire process here starts repeating and because it repeats you are going to get a continuous square wave or a continuous rectangular wave whichever you feel like interpreting right so now the output of the integrator serves as the input to the non inverting schmidt trigger the output of the non inverting schmidt trigger serves as the input to the integrator that is the reason why the switching of the output between utp and ltp as long as the integrator is concerned that will make the output of the schmidt trigger also switching between see plus v not set and minus v not set and so on and so forth you are going to get the continuous wave so this continuous waveform is one of the you know uh, features of your oscillators right so without taking any input you are going to get any desired waveform so anyway though it falls under the oscillator since it is a kind of a pattern the waveform pattern we also include it under the waveform generator okay so this is the simple working of the triangular or rectangular waveform generator but now the question is how would you change the frequency as well as the duty cycle here this is a very important thing practically speaking so now for as long as the circuit is concerned here whatever i have shown right so for the given values of r1 r2 r3 and c1 so you would have the fixed duty cycle as well as the fixed frequency you will not be able to change the duty cycle and the frequency but uh, practically you may have to have the different duty cycles as well as the different frequencies so wherein you will have to make some modification in this particular circuit let us try to see how exactly you will be able to you know change the duty cycle and the frequency which we call it as the frequency and duty cycle adjustment frequency and duty cycle adjustment
frequency and duty cycle adjustment. Let us redraw the circuit because it is very essential to draw the circuit again. So I have here my one of the operational amplifiers, right? So now what I do here is please notice this carefully my capacitor will remain as it is in the circuit like this now here what I will do is I will include one diode and one resistance like this and I will include one more diode like this and a resistance here so now when I have both I will have one more resistance here deliberately I have drawn a big resistance here here I would like to have one more resistance like this which is a variable resistance so I have the circuit something like this now the remaining parts are same as what we have seen earlier it will be like this it is connected here and this thing is same as what we have seen in the previous case so this is one output and this happens to be my second output so this is capacitor now the number of resistances have increased of course this I have to connect to ground so this is minus this is plus VCC minus VEE plus VCC minus VEE so now let me call this resistance as so from where should I start R1 <coughs> so R6 R7 R2 R3 so now let me write this as R3 this as R2 this as R4 this as R5 and this is R5A this is R5B that is required okay so let me write this as R6 and this as R7 and this I will call as D1 this as D2 and here I call this current as I1 please note it carefully this current as I2 that is the current through the diode so those currents would be I1 here and they it will be I2 depending upon the situation I will explain what exactly is that situation so let me call this current as I3 here so this is integrator output and this is Schmidt trigger output let us have it like this now all of you please uh, copy down the circuit diagram carefully now what I draw here so let me take it like this I will take a sharp curve here then I will take something like this I will take a sharp curve here so this is one then I wish to draw one more where I 
take a long curve here then I take a sharp here I take a long one this is for our understanding so now look here this is the reference for me and this is the next reference same thing holds good here also this is the reference and this is one more reference one reference the other reference yeah, this is this should give me fairly good idea about what I am trying to draw here so here I would have the output something like this something like this and here you can see please use your scale and pencil properly so that you don't get any variation as long as the output is concerned now this is my T1 T2 this is T3 and this I call as T4 so same way T1 this is T2 this is T3 this is T4 and let me call this as T5 again all these will be minus v not set and plus v not set and this will be utp and this is ltp these things remain same so now this is pulse width and here this is the pulse width hope you are taking these things and here what I will write here is this is the frequency control or the adjustment and here this one is the duty cycle control frequency control and the duty cycle control keep all these things at the same level let there not be any confusion to be very proper same way this sides also 
plus v not z now we will try to have the analysis of this so how exactly we are going to have this because we introduce some additional resistances here in fact your r4 here okay so if you look at the previous diagram r1 so in series with r1 i am introducing one r4 here that's what is the meaning here but i have considered it as a single resistance right so this r4 is basically one resistance included in series with r1 so you have r1 also you can take here right so that way you can uh, have so now uh, a variable resistance a variable resistance r4 is connected in series with r1 so this is one thing <coughs> and this r4 right it basically takes care of your frequency control and the other one anyway that we will see later uh, as long as the duty cycle uh, control is concerned this is basically uh, frequency control so now what happens if I include uh, the R4 in series with resistance R1, right? So basically, if you increase the value of R4, okay, it reduces the charging current. Now you, you go back to this, okay? In this case, we have I1 is the charging current, right? So how quickly you go to minus UTP from LTP or how fast you will go from minus LTP to uh, or LTP to UTP that is all decided by the charging time constant so this R1 and C1 that I have already told you here right so now this charging current I1 would decide the value of or the rate at which the UTP and output uh, LTP are reached right in the uh, integrator output now if I include a variable resistance here if I make it variable so then obviously I can change this that's what I am showing here right so the whole thing let us not consider this this is done for a different purpose for a particular value of say your R5 R6 and R7 right so let us say that they are fixed now when I change the value of R4 I can increase or decrease the charging current right so increasing in increase in R4 reduces charging current I hope you can easily understand this right so now when the charging current is reduced you can see here now this is for one case S this one is very quickly uh, you know going to uh, LTP from UTP whereas here from LTP to UTP again if you want to go that is the time duration T1 T2 and T2 to T3 they are different right increasing R4 reduces the capacitor charging current so when capacitor current is reduced the capacitor charges slowly right the capacitor charges slowly and whatever the time interval you are going to have there right so they are going to get changed so similarly decreasing r4 so decreasing r4 it increases the capacitor charging current and the capacitor uh, you know charges faster and the frequency is also increased right so this r4 basically is used for the frequency control right using r4 using r4 the frequency control using R4 
the using R4 the frequency control can be achieved using R4 the frequency control can be achieved right then <coughs> we will have the next aspect here R5 R6 and R7 right so R5 R6 and R7 so these are basically to have the charging time of the capacitor R5 R6 and R7 right so now let us try to first understand how exactly this particular phenomena takes place right when the Schmidt trigger output is positive let us say that when the Schmidt trigger output is positive the current I1 flows through the diode D1 and resistance R6 so Schmidt trigger output is positive means this is plus V not set okay this is plus V not set let me write it as plus V not set the current will flow now let us not consider the frequency control I am talking about the duty cycle control the current I1 flows through R5 the diode D1 and R6 so it will charge the capacitor in this direction this we have already seen in the earlier case also right so this one but here we had only one resistance R1 where wherein we did not have any control over the duty cycle or the frequency but since we are interested in having the control over the duty cycle as well as the frequency we are making some modifications in the circuit so during the positive output that is plus V not set of your Schmidt trigger the current will flow in this direction I1 through R5 sorry uh, yeah R5 D1 and R6 it will make the capacitor to charge to this polarity right so now when the Schmidt trigger output is negative that is minus V not set right so now you can see when the Schmidt trigger output is negative uh, the current I2 okay so when this is minus instead of plus V not set let us say that I have here this is minus V not set and definitely the current has to go in the other direction but this diode D1 will prevent the current I2 to go through this so obviously your capacitor will now charge or in connection with the first case it will discharge so in this path that is capacitor R7 D2 then it will go like this so now this current I think I should have taken it as I3 I have taken it as I2 only so I have should have taken it as I3 so this is I1 I2 oh sorry yeah correct it is I1 or I2 it is correct right so this way it is going as I1 in this direction it is going as I2 okay so now here during the output of Schmidt trigger at plus V not set the current I1 flows during the output of the Schmidt trigger as minus V not set the I2 flows right so now when you are R5 you please concentrate on this R5 I draw it again here so when this knob is exactly at the center position that is this your R5 A and R5 B are equal okay so assuming that your R6 is equals to R7 R6 is equals to R7 when this knob is at the exact center position so your current I1 must be equal to I2 I think everyone must agree with me right so when this knob is here your current I1 should be equal to I2 as long as your R8 sorry R6 is equals to R7 now if at all you bring this knob on either side right so when the moving contact is on top so let us say that here this I remove now here this is the moving contact right so this moving contact suppose if it is on top here right so for I1 you don't get any resistance from R5 I1 will flow like this now this is your I1 I1 will flow like this right and for I2 you would get the entire resistance R5 included right so similarly if you have 
your knob this knob here okay so the entire r5 gets added for the flow of i1 whereas for i2 your r5 will be zero both the cases you can see here right so now that indicates your charging current okay your charging current i1 and i2 will be different depending upon where exactly you keep the position of this particular knob right so that means when the moving contact or the knob is on top of r5 so i1 will be definitely larger than i2 so therefore your capacitor charges faster right the capacitor charges faster during t1 to t2 then compared to t2 to t3 right so here it, the charging will be faster but the discharging from t2 to t3 will be slower right whereas now if the knob is at this position bottom position definitely your i2 will be much larger than i1 that time from t1 to t2 right it will be slower whereas from t2 to t3 it will be faster these are the two cases which give me when i1 is greater than i2 or in this case when your i2 is greater than i1 the charging will be different so obviously you are going to get the different pulse width now in the first case the pulse width is different in the second case your pulse width is different please note that the frequency remains same in both the cases right so now if you take this as the total t this remains same in both the cases so therefore you should be able to obtain the value of the different duty cycle right so the duty cycle what we are going to have here that entirely depends upon the value of the value of r5 here right whereas as long as the frequency is controlled the whole thing here is being controlled by this r4 so you can make it slow or fast accordingly the entire waveform gets changed here as long as its variation is concerned so now that will give me an idea about how i should process or i should proceed with the design right so here i write r4 i have already written that r5 controls the duty cycle your r5 controls the duty cycle right so how exactly the r5 controls the duty cycle we have seen it is from the point of view of whether the current i1 is greater than i2 or the current i2 is greater than i1 that all depends upon where exactly you keep the position of this particular knob right so this is how you will have to proceed with uh, the working of uh, the variable frequency and duty cycle uh, triangular bar square wave generator right so with this background let us quickly look into the design aspect here let me write the design okay, how exactly we proceed with the design so the first one is uh, the non inverting uh, schmidt trigger circuit because uh, this circuit basically comprises of uh, two parts one is the integrator and another is uh, the schmidt trigger so now i just write it here r2 is equals to plus v not set divided by uh, i3 i go back here r2 is plus v not set or you can just write it as uh, modulus of v not divided by i3 this is clearly understandable r2 is equals to this output divided by i3 okay so then r3 is equals to utp divided by i3 r3 is equals to again utp the same value right so utp or your uh, uh, v not set right divided by i3 and your i3 is generally equal to 100 times 
I B max. I three is hundred times I B max. Right. <coughs> so capacitor. So though it is not related to the Schmitt trigger, it's a part of the integrator. So capacitor C is calculated as I one into delta T divided by delta V. The same formula what we have taken earlier right so your i1 is equals to i1 minimum i just go back here and check i1 is equals to i1 minimum now this i1 minimum is as per the requirement of the diode please note it here right so you should have a minimum diode current right so then this delta this is for i can write it as the diode delta t is the maximum pulse width this is very important maximum pulse width at the lowest frequency maximum pulse width at the lowest frequency right so what do you understand by that I will go back here now what pulse width you would like to have right so what maximum pulse width you would like to have that will be decided by the lowest frequency the pulse width maximum means the frequency will be minimum so for that you will have to select the capacitor right your capacitor will be selected in such a way that it should take the charge and it should discharge to cater to the requirements of the maximum pulse width and which happens at the lowest frequency and of course your delta V delta V is one second delta V is equals to UTP minus LTP UTP minus LTP this is not the end of it so we have some more things here and generally right so you can as uh, sometimes uh, C can be assumed for by FET op amps we will see these things uh, when we uh, take up some uh, uh, examples later right C can be assumed for by FETM op amps so now uh, see here we will have to uh, now R2 and R3 we have seen we will go back here R2 and R3 we have seen this is as long as Schmidt trigger is concerned but now I will have to look into R4 R5 R6 and R7 right so for that see here for minimum current to flow for minimum current I want to flow for minimum current I want to flow R4 R5 and R6 are to be in series needless to mention that R6 and R7 are equal okay so for the minimum current i want to flow here r4 r5 and r6 they should be in series or it is r4 r5 and r7 right so they should be in series this is the point to be noted so this implies your r4 plus r5 plus r6 is equal to so what is the total voltage here I will go back here so this is plus V naught set minus VF divided by I1 minimum all of you are able to get it or not right so R4 R5 R6 so this is my R4 this is my R5 and this is my R6 maybe I have got a drop here VF across the diode so now this is the minimum current I1 R4 r5 r6 so this is your plus v naught set so your 
R4 plus R5 plus R6 should be equal to V0 set minus Vf divided by I1 minimum, right? So that you can write it as plus V0 set minus Vf, the voltage across the diode and I1 minimum. So Vf is the drop across the diode, right? So now this is one thing and another important thing, the ratio of the ratio of charging current the ratio this is to obtain the value of the other resistances r5 and r6 right so now we have r4 r5 r6 as a summation here now we have to bifurcate them so how should i get r4 how should get i how should i get r5 and r6 so the ratio of the charging current at lower frequency at lower frequency f1 and higher frequency higher frequency f2 is given as is given as you can see here if1 divided by if2 is equals to f1 divided by f2 that means at lower frequency the current is if1 at higher frequency the current is if2 right uh, quick charging quick discharging will result in the higher value or the higher value of the current will res result in quick charging and discharging that we have already seen so definitely what is the current corresponding to a frequency f1 and what is the current corresponding to frequency f2 they will follow this particular relationship okay now at lower frequency at lower frequency f1 okay so your if1 if1 will be i1 minimum because i have always started taking the minimum current so therefore i1 minimum divided by if2 look at the above equation this is equal to f1 divided by f2 i have just substituted for if1 as i1 minimum right so this is another important equation which i use to separate the resistances are 4 r5 and r6 okay so now i have taken the ratio of i1 minimum divided by if2 as f1 divided by f2 okay so now to get the highest output frequency f2 to get the highest output frequency f2 i have already got f1 here now i am going to get the highest output frequency f2 so what i should do to get the highest output frequency here in this case right so to get the highest output frequency i have to make r4 zero to get the highest frequency my r4 is zero because very quickly the capacitor should get charged this i1 should be highest to that time right so when this is highest when your r4 is zero right so f2 to get the highest frequency output f2 r4 is equals to zero r4 equals to zero so when your r4 is equals to zero look at this equation r5 r5 plus r6 will have plus v naught set minus vf this current now will become if2 in the denominator this i1 minimum will now become i1 maximum this is if2 corresponding to the higher frequency this is how i have to separate out the values of r4 plus r5 plus r6 right so r5 plus r6 is equals to v naught set minus vf divided by if2 right so now one more thing is there for maximum pulse width 
for maximum pulse width R5 and R6 are in series for the maximum pulse width R5 and R6 are in series and for minimum pulse width for minimum minimum pulse width R5 is equals to 0 look here for the maximum pulse width R5 and R6 are in series for minimum pulse width your R5 is equals to 0 right so now when this is not there only these things will decide the value of the pulse width so now this will imply R5 plus R6 divided by R6 because R5 is 0 here is equals to pulse width maximum divided by pulse width minimum R5 plus R6 divided by R6 is equals to pulse width maximum divided by pulse width minimum this is how I should be able to further separate out R5 and R6 so using this equation R4 plus R5 plus R6 I have one value and here I will just take out this R4 using this equation then I am left with R5 and R6 to separate out R5 and R6 I am using this particular equation so now this is one important then this is another important parameter which we are using this is another important parameter or equation or the relationship then this is another one and finally based on the given width of the pulses maximum and minimum I should be able to obtain the value of R5 and R6 separately so this is how you have to proceed with the design of uh, your triangular bar square wave generator with the adjustable pulse width and duty cycle sorry pulse width and uh, frequency and when we look at one example probably we should be able to understand uh, the working of this or uh, the significance of this formula whatever we have taken right so i hope you have followed all these things and probably in my next presentation i will come back with one example on this particular uh, uh, circuit or the triangular bar uh, square wave generator thank you